The natural law tradition, which is typically endorsed by thinkers in the Catholic tradition, paints a distinctively teleological picture of human nature. On this view, it is the telos and purpose of a being that reveals its true nature. The American theologians and natural law experts, Jean Porter and Stephen Pope, conclude that the scholastic natural law theory presupposes a teleological conception of human nature, and that such an ethical conception of human personhood evaporates if nature is purposeless. It seems like the very plausibility of natural law theory rests on the possibility of attributing goals and purposes to the natural domain in general and human nature specifically. But, and here we have the issue at hand, many notable scholars have made the argument that modern science is hostile to teleological categories. For example, the philosopher of biology, Alex Rosenberg, has concluded with a notable certainty that the message of science, and I quote him, is absolutely clear. No teleology, no purposes, goals, or ends. End quote. Many have singled out Darwinian biology as especially hostile to teleology. The paleontologist George Gaylord Simpson suggested that the meaning of evolution entails that, and I quote him, Man is the result of a purposeless and natural process that did not have him in mind. End quote. If these critical voices are correct, then modern biology seems to severely undermine natural law theory. My puzzle seeks to resolve this seeming tension by exploring the ontology of organismic systems. My puzzle's hypothesis is that recent research into organismic biology can provide fruitful links between natural law theory and contemporary evolutionary biology. In my first field of study, I placed natural law theory within the wider field of theological anthropology, showing how natural law theory occupies a unique position among the different views of human nature. I then move on to consider my second field of study, which is organismic biology. This area of biology, which departs significantly from gene-centered approaches to evolutionary biology, suggests that organisms are active participants in the evolutionary process. Indeed, due to the recent resurgence in interest in organismal development, organicism is once again getting a hearing in the biological community. In the discussion, I explored the links between organismic biology and natural law theory. In order to extend these new directions in biology into the realm of theology, I suggest that we need to tackle several issues. First, natural law theory holds to both the Aristotelian notion that teleology is intrinsic to organisms and that such teleological features are extrinsically grounded in God. How should we hold intrinsic and extrinsic teleology together? Although new discoveries in organismic biology can shed light on the ontological claims regarding human nature from the perspective of natural law theory, these updated accounts of teleology do not provide us necessarily with a way to balance the two forms of intrinsic and extrinsic teleology. Second, although an engagement with organismic biology can aid in fleshing out a non-reductionist picture of human nature, organismic biology does not by itself demonstrate how such teleological features relate to the divine being. So to conclude, I think there are good reasons to think that organismic biology can shed light on a natural law conception of human nature. But one needs to, at the same time, acknowledge the limitations of bringing such scientific data into dialogue with a scholastic conception of natural law theory.